I am shocked when I watch those videos online of you and Axl Rose. I can't think of like something that I would think would never happen. Carrie Underwood and Axl Rose, like being pals, like you've performed with Guns N' Roses and he's come and performed with your band. Yeah. And I see him up there and I go, this is crazy <laughs> that you two, like, like how does that all come about? Um, I mean, I've, I've been a fan since almost birth, um, you know, as a, as a very small child. I feel like his voice is something that just cut through the air to me. Amazing and, voice, right? Yes. And just doing things that were different. He didn't sound like everybody else. And, you know, sometimes it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. It was, it was, like, that's not what the song was meant for. He was willing to, you know, get into the song and do what the song needed, and his voice just did different things. So as a kid, you were probably like, wow, Guns N' Roses is really cool. I love his voice. I love that. I didn't that. know what they – we didn't have MTV. We didn't have – like, we, we had five five stations on the on the television. Right. All we had was the radio and the things that my sisters would listen to. So it's like I just knew his voice. I didn't know anything about the band. I mean, as a five-year-old, seven-year-old, right. whatever – you don't know who's singing it. You just know you like that. Right. How does this come about that, like, you're hanging with Axl Rose and, and, and doing a Guns N' Roses thing? Well, we've covered GNR for, I mean, the, since the beginning. What did you cover? Paradise City, Patience. Oh. Wow. Um, I think we've done, have we done November Rain? November Rain. Yeah, oh, you so. must do a great rendition of that. Um, what a song. After the Cry Pretty tour wrapped, um, I was like, hey, everybody, band, let's, we were in D Detroit, I think, right? And I was like, hey, like, let's go to Vegas and see Guns N' Roses, because they were playing a couple shows there. So we went, and I never, anytime I go to a concert, like, I, I kind of don't, I don't want to be in the way. Right. Um, I just want to go and enjoy myself. But they were like, oh, you know, if you want to say hi afterwards. And I was like, <laughs> You know, oh my nervous, gosh. right? Yes. Even though you're famous, even though you've had tremendous success, I it's don't. like those guys are like a little intimidating. Not a little, a lot intimidating and cool, right? I just, I am not worthy. I'm not worthy <laughs> to breathe <laughs> to breathe the oxygen. <laughs> then what do they do? They march you backstage, and you're what? Suddenly talking to Axel and yeah, Slash? Yeah, they took me back to his dressing room, and I, I just got to chat with him for a few minutes. I don't even know. It was a blur. What do you even say? I don't know. We talked for a minute about the show and about touring and stuff like that and right yeah. but I, I've been trying to sing with him for many years and we had asked um for stagecoach last year and because they were like we're in your neck of the woods you know we know you're wow. you're kind of gearing up for tour so maybe you're in that mode and I wrote an email and sent it and was just explained why because it does sound unexpected yeah it's great um, but I think just knowing you know what an influence he was and I, is to me i also think like it's wild when you're performing with him you start to dance like him <laughs> you do the whole we we have fun i think and, and that's yeah. the thing about like when i'm on stage by myself that's one thing but then when there's like somebody else you get to play off of um you know it's it's just a different energy it's a different vibe